Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the Fire Pit, and happy anniversary! Woo! Maybe not the official anniversary of this podcast itself, but Nigel, Reginald, happy watching movies together online because it's a pandemic and there's nothing else to do. Anniversary of us. Yeah. Wow. Happy anniversary. I was going to make cards, but I couldn't fit that onto a card. Um, I, I think, though, I, I actually I saw one or two of those in um, in Kroger's. Like, they, Hallmark has a whole, like, congratulations for not going insane while you were stuck in isolation for 365 days. Yeah, but days. I wanted one a little bit more specific. You know how they have the, like, we're sorry if you're a sick aunt. I wanted one for congratulations on surviving a pandemic or for, well lasting a year in a pandemic and watching movies with your friends card they didn't have those so oh you need to go to target for those oh damn okay yes, yes. well now but, it's too late but yeah. i'll have to go to target to get the happy one year anniversary on making a podcast uh, card in a few weeks get the one with the cute puppies and the kittens like all cuddled together i really like that one that is cute that is very cute it is adorable, but I'm Tom, British name Thompson. I've lost my Jedi privileges, unfortunately. You never had them. You were a Sith. That's that's racist, Dan. Hey, only Sith deal in absolutes. <laughs> says says with an absolute. <laughs> but it's that time again. A new journey will be mapped out and plotted in full detail tonight. That's right. It's time for selection section number eight. We're out of alliteration zone, which I'm a little disappointed in, but we'll get back there at some point. Where is the team going after barely escaping the Empire Strikes Back? Well, we're going to find out in just a bit. But first, a refresher for those new to the podcast. So for that, I shall send things over to Reginald. Why, thank you, Thompson. Thank you. Reginald here, American name Josh. And I honestly don't know what we're doing here. I figured we peaked last week with having the Shattered Order guys on. No. So, like, where no, 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 is no, there no, to go? No. That, no. After you peaked last week. Oh, Tom, yeah. Tom and I are just hitting our stride. You, you peaked, sir. Oh, I boy. might have. I peed a little too. Oh, uh, yes. Peaked and peed more than a little. I'm still editing the episode because of all the peaking you yeah. did. I didn't actually think you could actually hear somebody touching themselves over a microphone, <laughs> but you can. <laughs> Turns out you can. And now they've officially shut off this episode, and they are <laughs> going to edit out all references to our podcast in their podcast. We're sorry, guys. All we're right. very sorry. Yeah, we're back to Anywho. status quo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Anywho, um, Reginald here, American name Josh, and... Uh, Again, as Tom said, welcome to the Fire Pit Podcast. Now, if you're a loyal, long-time listener, you know who you are. Welcome back. We're just going to go ahead and recap what we're all about, since, you know, we're getting new viewers in. Hopefully, they haven't already shut us off from my uh, peaking last episode. But we're basically a movie review and discussion podcast. But uh, we have a very unique way of finding our movies. Um, we pick a destination movie. And then spend six weeks getting to that destination. Every single movie that we have watched has been connected by an actor or an actress. Um, this goes all the way back to our very first episode, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. And even to our first unrecorded episode, Showdown in Little Tokyo. But we take an actor or an actress and then we move them. A la, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Each season is divided into six journeys. Each journey is divided into six movies. You see how we did the math there? But tonight we're going to each present three lists um each of these lists are going to start off from empire strikes back leading to our destination film which dan will get to here in a second so we're each going to present three lists and we want at least two movies in those lists that we have not seen to keep it fresh so with that i'm going to hand things over to nigel and he will be revealing our destination film for this upcoming journey nigel Thank you, Josh. Brilliant explanation of this amazing podcast. Hello, everyone. Dan here, British name Nigel, 
And spring is here. Summer is just around the corner. And that can only mean one thing. Mosquitoes? No. Unbearable humidity? No. Sunburns? No. Fireworks? No. Baseball? Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess kind of makes sense. That's the one with the big orange ball, right? We'll educate him in the next six weeks, people. Yes, baseball season is here. In fact, opening day of Major League Baseball was just a few days ago as of this recording. So actually, by the time you're hearing this, it was probably a couple weeks ago. We wanted to do a baseball movie this season around this time of year. And while there's many, many classic baseball films to choose from, we also wanted to do one that paid homage to an actor that sadly passed away last year, way before his time. So this journey will be seeing 2013's 42, a biographical sports drama detailing the life of the legendary Jackie Robinson, the first African-American to play in Major League Baseball during the modern era. And he's played by Chadwick Boseman, who is definitely more famous for being Black Panther, but we really wanted to do 42 because like everyone's done Black Panther to, as a tribute to him. Yeah, this was kind of his breakout role too. So. Yes, yeah. And so that's the movie we're going to be getting to. We're going to get to it from The Empire Strikes Back. How we're going to get to from The Empire Strikes Back? Well, I guess we're just going to have to find out. So like Josh said, we're each going to present three lists. We uh, go in a round robin kind of a format. Josh will present last since we went with his list last time. And so uh, that's all I have to say about it. Anyone else have any other pearls of wisdom before we get to presentations? I would say you're saving the best for last, but I'm not super proud of my lists this week. You've said that before, and usually those are the lists that you wind up winning. Um, So... I don't know, Josh. I mean, all three of my lists are the winning lists. It's just a matter of which one we choose. So, I mean, you guys can just bow out now if you want. Okay. Oh, holy shit. Was it that easy? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Why didn't we think about this a year ago? Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I, got a, I got a joke. I got a joke. I got a joke. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's my... I got, I got a list. I got a list. Empire Strikes Back to 42 via Harrison Ford. Boom. Done. We're so, That's it. Okay. Beat you to it. Well, if you want to do that, then how do you link 42 to... Shit. (laughs) (laughs) So, anywho, Nigel, I believe you are up to present your very, very first list. Yes, and I've got a couple of doozies tonight, guys. Um, I'm going to present my first list. Uh, I call this one Cops and Cars. Ooh, let me get that on paper because I like that name. Although they're not all cop films and they're not all car movies, but they all involve fighting bad guys. I mean, I'm sure they have to ride in cars at some point. Well, yeah, one of them definitely. All right, well, talk it to us, Nigel. All right, so from Empire Strikes Back, we take Billy D. Williams and go to Nighthawks. I've heard of this film. Why have I heard of this film? It's a supposedly completely underrated gem from very early in Sylvester Stallone's career. Um, it's when he oh, was, shit. yeah, it's when he was still considered a very serious actor because he had just come off of Rocky two when he filmed this movie and first blood part one and Rocky one. So like Sylvester Stallone was still being like tapped as this really serious actor. He hadn't quite evolved into his action machismo mode yet he doesn't kind of become that until rocky 3 or rambo 2 so yeah um but anyways this is apparently a really underrated sylvester stallone film but it's also got billy d williams that's his he plays his partner and rutger hauer plays uh the bad guy the terrorist that they're going after i've never seen this film and i've been dying to see this film okay yeah it's ringing bells for me now yeah 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 Yeah. i'm gonna look up i i'm looking up the uh poster just so making it also looks weird because because Stallone's got long hair and a beard. Does he now? Yeah. So we go Billy D. Williams to Nighthawks. From Nighthawks, we take Sylvester Stallone and we go and fight Ivan Drago in Rocky Four. Nice. From Rocky Four, this is where I realized I was using the same actor three times without actually using him three times. Uh, from Rocky Four, we take Dolph Lundgren who played aforementioned Avan Drago, to The Expendables 2. Nice. Uh, I've actually never seen that one. I've not. I've seen Expendables 1 and I've seen 3. I've never seen 2. I think that's the one where they fight Jean-Claude Van Damme. Anyways, we take Dolph Lundgren and go to The Expendables 2. 
from the Expendables 2, we go to Liam Hemsworth and we go to Empire State. I don't remember. I have that not, one. don't know that one either, Tom. Yeah, that's, it sounds familiar, but blur. Well, it might sound familiar because it stars a very famous wrestler, which is funny because it's WrestleMania season, The Rock, who also stars with Liam Hemsworth in that movie. We take The Rock and we go to Fast and Furious. Not the Fast and the Furious. Fast and Fast. Oh, Fast, Fast and Furious. Yeah, we started to run out of, run out of names for this series. Okay. <laughs> so they started taking so they started taking off the adjectives. Anyways, so we t- the next one's just going to be called called Fast Furious. I think this is the fifth Fast and the Furious film. Maybe the sixth. I don't know, but it's one of the first ones with the Rock. Anyways, we take the Rock, go Fast and Furious, and from Fast and Furious, we take Lucas Black to Forty Two. Not a bad list. I say that's not a good list to start out with and we'll discuss that more as we start selling these lists but it's an interesting start interestingly enough you could use creed 2 as well instead of rocky 4 but rocky 4 is a superior film i mean it's got happy birthday Polly robot so uh yeah i can't argue that logic josh yeah yeah i'm just saying you could i don't want to you could. <laughs> I just honestly, uh, I'll discuss it in a minute, but there's a reason why I really want to do Rocky IV. <laughs> Anyways. It is definitely a peak 80s movie. It's got like four montages before yeah. even like the first major scene. Yeah, it's also, yes. the, it's also the movie where Rocky starts to become a cartoon character. <laughs> yes. Uh, but not not a bad start, Nigel, but I'm sorry, but my, my list is probably going to beat yours. All oh, right. that's interesting. So, Dan, which uh, two movies on that list did you, have you not seen? Oh, uh, I've never seen Nighthawks. I've never seen Empire. I've, I have not seen Expendables 2. I've seen Expendables 1 and 3, but I have not seen 2. Um, I have never seen Empire State, and I've never seen, well, obviously 42. I've not seen 42. So mm-hmm. I haven't seen 42 either. Have you seen 42, Tom? I have not seen, honestly, um, with the exception whoa. of Rocky four, I have seen zero on this list. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this our first time going into a destination film where all three of us haven't seen it? I, I think, think so. Holy cow. I thought one of you guys had seen it already. No, I haven't seen 42. I, I was going to, but then I, we decided to do this like last year for this time of year. And I, I held off watching it. No, oh my God! This this could this be is awesome. a f- podcast first. Nice. Yeah, because because I know it chapter one. You two had seen it, but I'd never seen it. Mm-hmm. And wow! Every, well, awesome! Yeah, every, awesome! This this is going to be fun. But yes, actually, this list I have not seen most of these films. I've only seen Fast and the Furious, and I've only seen Rocky Four. And for the listeners out there, we also have a rule, a uh, soft rule. We have to have at least two movies on our list that none of that the person presenting them has never seen. I did say that already, Tom. I know you did, but I forgot. At that it's okay. Moment. It's okay. We're just reiterating it to make sure that they understand the rules. That is correct. You will learn by force. <laughs> Fantastic. Anywho, since we're uh, since you're already pounding things into our ears, there, Thompson. Why don't you go ahead with your list? Well, <laughs> you know, I had I, there's there's a better segue there. I know there is. <laughs> Hey, Tom, since you're already fucking our ears, why don't you go ahead and continue on with our list? No, there's a better one there. <laughs> I can do better than that. You no, know, I'm tracking the trajectory and I see where this is going. So I'm just going to cut you off with my first list. Probably smart. Yes. I'm trying to steal a page from your book, Josh, and going from my least best to my best best, which is hard because all of my lists are really good in different ways but this one i'm going to start off with uh i'm calling it play the game all of these on this list deal with sports Ooh, yes and to start us off i'm taking james earl jones who did the voice of darth vader from empire to wait is that legal yes yes we we established in the last I was just quoting phantom menace come on oh oh stop it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> quit trying to dredge up bad memories josh but we're taking james Earl jones into the greatest the film about uh, muhammad ali that also starred muhammad ali no oh, uh, interesting yes james Earl jones plays malcolm x in this film and from this film we take Robert Duvall into the natural. Ooh. Yes. Mm, that's uh, a good film. 
Mm-hmm. I've never seen it, but I think I've heard of it once or twice. So looking forward to that. But uh, we take Robert Prosky from The Natural to Rudy. Ooh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The 1990 Rudy, classic. Rudy, Rudy. God damn it, Josh. You, we, we, you can't not chant Rudy. In Rudy, though, is one John Favreau, who gives us love in the movie Wimbledon. A movie about, I think, tennis or something along those lines. That's another baseball film. Balls are involved. That's all I know. And also involved in that film is a vision of an actor, Paul Bettany. Hmm. Who leads us into a knight's tale? Oh wow! Oh, God. <laughs> and surprisingly enough, Alan Tudyk, the best space captain pilot ever to be impaled, he takes us into forty-two. That he does. That he does. Yes. And of this list, only Rudy and a knight's tale I have seen. The rest, I'm going in blind. So, what do you hmm. think about that? One right there. Interesting. I had a list with dodgeball on it. Now I'm wondering why I got rid of that. Oh, yeah. Oh? Yeah, I was one of those ones where the I, I couldn't use the actor, one of the actors, so I had to ditch it, and I just forgot that I was using dodgeball. Uh, yes. Good list, though. Good list. Thank you. Thank you. Again, it, I tried to go backwards when making this list. I saw Alan Tudyk. It was in 42. It was like... Oh, please, Knight's Tale. Because the Knight's Tale has jousting, Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah. All this stuff has sports. And it's one of the most complete lists I have. I have one or two where there's one movie away from making it a perfect theme. But I think the other two lists I have are stronger in terms of everything else to them. But not a bad start, in my opinion. Not a bad list. The, the first movie doesn't really appeal to me all that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me either. That's the only one that I really am not a huge. F- I, I, it, it doesn't appeal to me. I'm not going to say a huge fan of, but yeah, I'm just the first movie is the one that I would have to trudge through. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the yeah. rest of the list is solid, Tom. It's a good list. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I'll go through more of the details to try to sell you on some of these because there's a lot going on in the great. That's your that weakest I- list. I'm really looking forward to your other next two lists. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're quite all right, Josh. You're right. We need to give you a chance to try to top that. So what's list number one for Josh? All right. Well, I had two different names for this one, but I decided to go with the air quotes MCU question mark. (laughs) Okay. So uh, I was going to call it wish MCU. Oh no. Or or, mom, can we have the MCU? We have MCU at home. (laughs) (laughs) So, For the first one, we follow Carrie Fisher from Empire Strikes Back to a 1991 movie, Soap Dish. I love that film! Starring one Robert Downey Jr. But from Soap Dish, we follow Kathy Moriarty, not Sherlock Holmes' nemesis, to the 1980 classic film Raging Bull. Starring my headcanon, the MCU's Uncle Ben, Joe Pesci. I will argue that until they officially say otherwise. But anywho, from Raging Bull, the fun boxing film with Bob De Niro, we will follow Don Dunphy to 2010's The Fighter, starring the not-not-MCUs Amy Adams and Christian Bale, a.k.a. Lois Lane in uh, Batman. But uh, it's a boxing film starring Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale, where uh, Mark Wahlberg's a rising actor, and he's got a really drug addict brother of Christian Bale and a really shitty family. But anywho, from The Fighter, we follow Jack McGee to... Moneyball, starring Star-Lord himself, Chris Pratt. But from Moneyball, we follow Stephen Bishop to Friday Night Lights. I had a sports theme going too, but then I noticed every one of these had a superhero actor slash actress with, you know, no exceptions. Um, Because in Friday Night Lights, Derek Luke, who starred in Captain America, the first Avenger, is in there. But we follow Lucas Black to 42. Starring Chadwick Boseman, a.k.a. Black Panther. Not a bad starter list there, Josh. I'm not going to lie. I've seen one, two, three, four on this list. Moneyball and 42 are the only ones I haven't seen, but I've wanted to see them. And every other film, I can confirm they're great. I've only seen Moneyball and The Fighter. What about you, Nigel? Uh, I think I've only seen Raging Bull and 
Moneyball. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And Moneyball was, I think, one on one of my lists uh, a journey or two ago. So it's nice to see it pop up here again. Oh, yeah. I've seen the movie recently. It's a good movie. I enjoy it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Josh, you were saying that you weren't so sure about your list this selection section. I think you were lying. I think you were playing it down because this is solid. Darn. He's pool hustling us. <laughs> I'm, not dead good. I'm not dead good. I'm not dead good. How about $20 this game, guys? <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> but no, Josh, good start. This is, I think we got a good start, guys. Not bad. Yeah. I also realized that my first list, we have a, the first three weeks is we get to look at Sylvester Stallone's career at different stages of his career. Mm-hmm. Like we get to see early prototype Sylvester Stallone and Nighthawks. And then we get to see like peak Sylvester Stallone and Rocky Four. Mm-hmm. And then we see like Sylvester Stallone making the Expendables film, which are basically the action move version of those Adam Sandler comedies yeah. where like Adam Sandler just gets a bunch of his friends and they just make a movie once a year. That's mm-hmm. what the Expendables are, except action movie equivalents. All right. All right. Well, that's uh, my list. So, um, Nigel, what's your second list? Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. Which one do I want to present next? Okay. So, Woo me, baby. <laughs> this one is called America, a tour. Fuck yeah. All right. All of these uh, films kind of have like, uh, they're a little slices of America. The first movie is uh, apparently a really bad film. <laughs> but Quick start. We take Carrie Fisher from The Empire Strikes Back and wa- and go to Under the Rainbow, which is oh. a mo- yeah, apparently it's a bad film. Um from Under the Rainbow, we take Chevy Chase and go to Fletch. Oh, Grody. Go on. You don't like Fletch? No. Of course oh. he doesn't. People love that movie. I've never seen it. Apparently it's a classic. Anyways, neither have I from Fletch. We take Gina Davis and go to a league of their own from a league of their own. We take David Stratham and go to, we are Marshall from, we are Marshall. We take Anthony Mackie and go to captain America, civil war. Oh, I had Alyssa had civil war in it too. Nice. And from civil war, we take Chadwick Boseman and go to 42. Oh, that's how you're getting there. Okay. Yeah, all of these things are little slices of America. There's a bad film. There's a Chevy Chase film. There's a film about baseball, a film about football, and a film that features both Captain America and a Civil War. It doesn't get more American than a Civil War. This is true. And I'm looking up uh, Under the Rainbow. For those listening, the description is a visiting dignitary, a CIA agent, a Nazi spy, Japanese tourist, an assassin, and a group of midget actors from the Wizard of Oz all check into an elite Los Angeles hotel called Under the Rainbow. And I was going to say that your list is only lacking subtle racism, but <laughs> apparently it's got it covered. <laughs> give, wow. che- give, give Chevy Chase a minute and he'll, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting second list, Nigel. Um... I think Under the Rainbow is definitely your What's in the Box film. Yeah, it, I'll explain when we start going over our list in more details. But yes, it's my definitely What's in the Box film. Never seen it. Never seen Fletch. And that's it. I have seen League of Their Own a thousand times. I've seen mm, we never are, seen that one, actually. Really? It's a great film. Oh, um, yeah. I have seen We Are Marshall, and I've seen Captain America Civil War about a dozen times. Oh, and 42. If you count 42 as part of the list, I've not seen that movie. But I haven't seen Under the Rainbow, and I haven't seen Fletch. Fletch is apparently a classic comedy from Chevy Chase, but I've I've just never I've, seen it. I've never seen it. Okay, Under the Rainbow definitely piques my curiosity. I've never seen We Are Marshall. Um, I hear good things about That's it. That's Matthew McConaughey. It's a good it was okay. film. I saw it the year it came out. What year was that movie? Don't remember. Two thousands, I think. But it was it was like a two thousand. It was between two thousand seven and two thousand ten. Two thousand six. So you were you were a little bit off. Almost. I, I remember because I was, uh, where did I say? I want to say I saw it. I thought I saw it in Louisiana, but I guess I saw it in England. I saw it right around that time. So I might, but. Uh, so, but you liked it enough. So I, mm-hmm. so even if, if we did go with this list, at least that film we know would be good. 
League of Their Own. Yeah, well. for that one, I would say the first three films I haven't seen. But then again, A League of Their Own, it might be one of those films that I have seen, I just don't remember. Because I know my parents probably have rented that at least once or thrice. That's the famous, there's no crying in baseball movie. Yeah, it's one of those things. I like. I know the movie, I just don't think I've seen it all the way through. Mm-hmm. And actually, Fletch, I think I'm mistaking for another Chevy Chase film, which was just disgustingly bad. So I I take it back. I don't think I've seen Fletch. Yeah, I think, isn't Fletch the one where he's like a some kind of an undercover agent and he keeps wearing different disguises or something like that? I thought they was a photographer in that one. No, I think he's an undercover agent or a detective of some kind. But we'll discuss that more once we get into the weeds. Okay. All right. Well, Thompson. Oh, Josh. My second list was hard because uh, both the second list and the final list are going to be really solid. But honestly, and it's going to disappoint my parents that this is not the list I am really going to champion because this is kind of inspired by them. But list number two, I am tentatively calling my parents list because Mm -hmm. two of these films... Thanks to them, they brought up as being connected to Billy D. Williams, and both of them are films I completely forgot about, and I didn't even know Billy D. Williams was in this first film. So we take Billy D. Williams from Empire Strikes Back to Brian's Song, which is, and I'll get into the weeds on this one, but my dad calls it the only film in the 1970s men were allowed to cry to. But we take win one for the Gipper. Something like that, yes. But we'll go into- I've never heard of that movie. Oh, my he, God. We'll- you may have heard of someone that was in it. He was president. Yes. <laughs> no, actually. No, Donald this- Trump? No, no. Donald Reagan. No, no. This is the not actor. that. <laughs> we've, we've lost track of Josh now. Back to the but- future reference. Take a drink. Yes. But no, we take uh, from Brian's song, we take Jack Warden to The Champ which is a film starring uh, John Voight and Ricky Schroeder, Faye Dunaway. And we take one Stefan Gearshack to The Hustler, classic 1940s, oh, no, excuse me, 1950s Paul Newman as a pool shark who stars with Jackie Gleason, Piper Laurie, and George C. Scott. But we take Charles Deerkop from The Hustler to Maverick, the classic 1990s one based off the TV series starring James Garner. And in that film is Mel Gibson, Alfred Molina, and Jodie Foster, who we will take Jodie Foster to Nell. (laughs) Yeah, that movie's (laughs) terrible. And this is why this is the second list and not my final list, but... (laughs) I've never seen it, and but we, I need this list because in it is Joe Insko, who takes us into 42. So almost all of these movies on this list deal with sports. Again, Brian Song is a football team based on a true story, which we'll get into in the details. The champ is boxing. The hustler is pool. Maverick is poker. Nell is a movie. And 42 is baseball. Is Nell really a movie? Is it though? I mean, it, it, do, it does star actors. It, it has Liam Neeson. So the there. best thing that ever came out of Nell was, I think. No, no, wait, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. You Nothing do could, see a uh, out of that naked film. Jodie Foster, but that is uh, oh very circumstance because it's like she's supposed to play this like not like mentally handicapped but just somebody who didn't have the developmental acuity um, of a person her age oh no no she uh, was raised in the essentially the yeah woods in the, the woods or something yeah, but uh she's she doesn't uh she's kind of you know how people who are raised not around humans mm-hmm, are mm-hmm. developmentally behind yeah but yeah, well, um yeah it's not a good movie yeah i know standard no. uh, Oscar bait sort of film and like yeah. I said it's it's the one film that's just not the best sure I'm not even going to say it's a what's in the box film that's more like can we put the box back but that's yeah and, and but, naked Jodie Foster is not a selling point so no. maybe not for you but no I think I like your first list better mostly because I recognize the movies although I love Maverick that's uh, like one of my I like Maverick too but I don't like Nell yeah 
I've never heard of any of those other films, although I am interested in The Hustler because I do like Paul Newman. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll I'll talk about Brian Song and The Champ in a bit because you're really going to have to sell me on those one because right now I like your first list better. Oh, I'll sell you on this one, but this is not my championship list. Okay, we'll we'll go into that in list three. So, John. All right. So um, I'm going to do I did something similar as you on my second list. Tom, but I went with sports movies, but I needed a link, a beginning movie. So um, I call this list Sports Ball and Aliens. Solid. <laughs> Good. We take Harrison Ford from Empire to Cowboys and Aliens. Damn it. <laughs> and then from Cowboys and Aliens, we take uh, Clancy Brown to The Hurricane. Ooh. Ooh, I love that movie. Never seen it. That's the uh, boxing film with Denzel Washington, right? Yes. Well, he plays a boxer, but it's not really a boxing film. Yeah. But, uh, oh, that's the one where he was uh, put behind bars or yeah. something, wasn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. But, uh, okay, so The Hurricane, we follow Debbie Morgan to Love and Basketball. I've heard of this film. Oh, I've huh. seen this one. What I've a, seen this one. One of my favorite YouTubers does it, did this video film not too long ago. It's uh, interesting, but it's uh, it's one of those like pieces where a guy and a girl through basketball and then shows them growing up. It's love. It's a basketball. But from love and basketball, we follow Dennis Haysbert to Major League, a baseball fooming. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I've never seen it. It doesn't seem like that big of a movie. What's that, Major League? Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, I mean. It's a movie. Yeah. I guess there's some people not as good as I now. like it. Not as yeah, good definitely as not now. as good as yeah, now. Yeah. No. But uh, from Major League, we follow Chelsea Ross to 2008's The Express, which is a biographical film about the first black Heisman Trophy winner. Ooh. From The Express, it's very topical to the uh, list. We follow Nicole Behart, Behari, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I apologize. I can't pronounce her last name. 242. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I mean, this is a pretty decent, well, no. Yeah, this Cowboys is pretty Barry good. Boys is terrible film. I've never seen it. You're not missing much. Which one? I've not seen Cowboys, Cowboys and Aliens. Cowboys and Aliens. I mean, John Favreau, Oh, it's it's a fun right? film. It's a fun film. I enjoy watching it, but it's not one that I'm rushing back to watch again. Um, Dan, it's John Favreau. Um, I think this was a film he did right after doing Iron Man 2. So it's a fun film. Tom will hate it. Oh, I do hate it. I've seen it. Yeah, but it's it's definitely not the best film you're ever going to meet. It's forgettable. It's very by the numbers, but it's a fun film. Well, decent second list. I'm really curious to see what... Uh... Your big list is going to be Josh. Yeah, because Josh always saves his best list for last. Mm -hmm. So hmm, what does he have that can top (laughs) major league? Mm. I don't know. Well, let's get to our third lists with Nigel's third list. Nigel, to you. Okay, third list, third list time. All right, so this is my list that I really want to do. This is like, this is the one I'm going to present the most because I've only seen one film on this list. So... I kind of want to do this one just to see movies I've never seen before. So this list is called, you think your day was bad because the movie starts off bad and just gets progressively worse as it goes from the empire strikes back. We take Harrison Ford to working girl. (laughs) Yeah. It's a romantic comedy dramedy with, um, Sigourney Weaver and Melanie Griffith. And I only know this one from the Bob's burgers episode where they were doing a working girl play. And then they end up doing die hard in the basement. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Also, it opens up our palette a little bit because actually romantic comedy is one of the few genres we've not touched on in this uh, podcast yet. This is so, true. Anyway, so we take Harrison Ford to Working Girl. From Working Girl, we take Melanie Griffith to Mulholland Falls. I don't know that movie. It's a film noir. Anyways, uh, from Mulholland Falls, we take Nick Nolte and go to Another 48 Hours. Hmm. Ooh. Eddie Murphy, huh? Yeah, the sequel to 48 Hours. I've not never a, seen the original. Yeah. Right. I've not seen either one either. It's from another 48 hours, we take Kevin Ty and go to, this is the only film I've seen on this list, Roadhouse. Roadhouse! Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yeah. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. My favorite modern Western ever. Yes. Oh, my God. And yes, Josh, I said Western, but it, this movie, it, it, it follows Western tropes, but it's not a Western <laughs> but it's a- I know, I know. I've seen this movie, but it's been like almost 
30 years since I've seen this movie. Fucking phenomenal film. Anyways, Mm -hmm. I love it. And from Roadhouse, we take Keith David and go to 21 Bridges. Oh, oh, I love that movie. Yes. And from 21 Bridges, we take Chadwick Boseman into 42. Like I said, I've only seen Roadhouse on this list. Oh, fuck you. That's a good list. And hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm, I'm checking out some of these uh, descriptions on IMDb just real quick. I've never heard of 21 Bridges. Wow, that came out two years ago. How? It's, okay, okay. Tom, you're full of shit. I was talking about that movie like around the time Chadwick Boseman died. I love that movie. Yeah, but there were a lot of other movies that he did that I knew about this one i blanked on most of these i'm curious about i've seen roadhouse i haven't seen any of the other ones so okay nigel good third list like i said if we if if i'm gonna champion one of my lists that's the one i want to do i saved the best for last on this one too like Mm -hmm. i because i've only seen one of those films and roadhouse is one of my favorite movies ever i fucking love that movie i have a funny story about that movie i'll tell later but yeah i love that movie Mm -hmm. The only one that seems like shaky for me is another 48 hours just because it's a sequel to a classic film. But we'll talk more when we get to selling these movies. Solid number three, Nigel. Thank you. You're very welcome. But is it going to be as solid as my final list? I don't know. So if you're if you're sitting down, team, because this is going to be the winning list. Said Tom for the 30th time. All right. Well, on that note, I'm calling this one The Long Shot. Also, all sports themed. And I'll get to the other theme. I tried to make this, but couldn't quite. So we take, again, Billy D. Williams to Bingo Long Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings, a movie which is fitting to start this out because it follows an early Negro League baseball team. Um, yes, it's got a lot of big name black actors from that time frame. James Earl Jones and Richard Pryor being the two big ones right there. And we take Richard Pryor from Bingo Long to Greased Lightning. Hmm. The true life story of Wendell Scott, the first black stock car racing driver to win an upper tier NASCAR race. So as you can see, it kind of connects a bit there. This one has Bo Bridges, Richard Pryor, Cleavon Little, who you would know from Blazing Saddles, and Bill Cobbs, who takes us to a film called The Hitter, which is definitely a what's in the box film about a professional ex-boxer. Um, who... So, like, he played Xbox in the early 2000s? Yes. Yo! Yes. If that gets your vote, yes. <laughs> no, this one's an interesting one. I'll go more to the details on this one. This could be a slipstream movie for us. In this film is um, Bill Cobbs, of course, Ron O'Neill, and Sheila Frazier. And we take Sheila Frazier into a movie called Three the Hard Way. Which is just another following up what's in this box with what's in this box. Uh, Which this one stars. I'm just going to give. No, I'll save the description of this one when we're selling this because this is really good. But it stars Sheila Frazier, Fred Williams, and Jim Brown of the Dirty Dozen and Cleveland Browns fame. We take Jim Brown into any given Sunday. I like that movie. Yes, a uh, sports film. Uh, the last one involves boxers, um, or at least people who were boxers. This one, obviously, a football film directed by Oliver Stone. It's got all-star cast of LL Cool J, Dennis Quaid, Al Pacino, and John C. McGinley, one Dr. Cox, who leads us into 42. I know one film on that list. I have seen only one film on this list as well, and that is Any Given Sunday. Same. And with the exception of John C., uh, all of the actors connecting them are black actors and actresses. I could not get a black actor or an actress to connect from Any Given Sunday to 42. I tried my death. It's an interesting list. Hashtag representation matters. Thank you, Josh. 
I and say that jokingly, but I do honestly mean it. <laughs> I think it was a solid list. Again, some really interesting films that, if not for Billy D. Williams, I don't think we're ever going to get to any of these lists or movies. Not anytime soon, but I'll talk more about that when we get into the selling portion. Mm. So well, I'm interested. That first movie looks interesting just by the name alone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the rest, too, I'm just going to say. But mm. I don't want to steal your thunder before you've had a chance to strike. So, Josh. <sighs> All right. Well, um, you guys like my third list. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I put in a lot of time on this one. This one is titled Josh List 3. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Whew. They yeah. <laughs> So uh, we follow Harrison Ford from Empire Strikes Back into Blade Runner 2049. Oh, God damn it. I love that film. Never seen it. Haven't even seen the first one yet either. But from Blade Runner 2049, we follow Ryan Gosling to La La Land. Never seen that one, but it's a musical. I started watching with my daughter. She got bored and left and I shut it off because I wasn't going to watch that by myself. <laughs> from La La Land, we follow J.K. Simmons to it's a superhero film. Justice League 2017. I went with this one over the Je the Zack Snyder cut because I don't have four fucking hours to to watch on this podcast. Thank you. Jeff. We could do the for the uh, Zack Snyder cut, but I don't want to again. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it is better. But anywho, from Justice League, we follow Henry Cavill to, I know Tom's going to love this movie, Stardust. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie based off a Neil Gaiman novel. It's actually really good. I really enjoy that movie. But um, from Stardust, we follow uh, Sienna Miller to 21 Bridges. And from 21 Bridges, we follow Chadwick Boseman to 42. I could not find a theme for this one, which is why it is Josh List 3. It, it works. It works. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's still a decently solid list. Mine are plus um, two or well, three. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, actually, weirdly enough, Josh, someone was talking about Stardust a day or two ago. They they were talking very highly of it because of um, Robert De Niro's character. I love that. Yeah, Robert De Niro playing a gay guy. Over the top, just like... Over the top. Yeah, I mean, I love the scene where he goes as like Shakespeare. Like, that's his name. Yes. And like, he he, th he makes it off, throws it off as uh, like... Scares the men, Shakespeare. It's scary to them, but they don't know that he's such an amazing writer. And I love his romance plays. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh my God, Bob De Niro, I love you for this role. <laughs> yeah, I remember the previews for that one and they did not endear me. But yeah, Robert De Niro just getting to chew scenery is always great. Yes. Which is why we really need to get to The Departed sometime. Oh my God, I love that movie. I have never seen that either, and we will get to that at some point. Oh, rest assured, team. You guys came up with some solid lists, Josh. You tried to sell yourself short, but, I mean, even your weak lists are pretty solid. I especially like your first list, the M Wish MCU. I think that's your strongest list, in my opinion. Yeah, like I said, I was, I want to say polishing, but I was literally throwing them together about 20 or 30 minutes before we started recording. <laughs> When Josh half-asses, he still does a pretty decent job. The algorithm. <laughs> the algorithm. All right, well, team, I think we've set some pretty solid lists down, so let's start picking them off, shall we? All right, well, let's start with you, Dan. If you had to pick one list from each one of ours, which one would it be? Uh, neither. You guys both suck. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm actually going over them again, looking at them. I actually like Tom's first list the best even though the greatest doesn't sound that appealing to me and wimbledon is a chick flick but um it's still a pretty good list I, a knight's tale is pretty decent it's been so long since i've seen rudy yeah i've actually never seen the natural and for the last time tom robert duvall is not in it it's robert redford anyway thank you well no robert duvall is in the natural he's um Robert Redford, oh, he's Robert, in the yeah, he's in. The, he's the lead. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Josh, from your lists, uh, I like. Um, I like your first one as well. Your uh, the MCU on Wish. 
like, yeah. Or or the before they were MCU list. <laughs> like it's kind of a pretty good list actually. So um, I actually I like your guys' first two lists. Oh, thank you, Nigel. And of mine. Um, and if you had to champion one list of your own, Nigel, what would you champion? My third list. I, I, I really would like to watch, if we're going to watch one of mine, I would like to watch the that one because it contains the most movies I've not seen and movies I really want to see. Like, I really want to see 21 Bridges and I really want to see Mulholland Falls. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I really like 21 Bridges. Yeah, and I really want to watch Roadhouse with you guys. <laughs> Roadhouse. I, I love just can't not say it that way. It's so good. All right, Tom. So what about you? Well, I'd say Nigel of your list, and I'm looking through them again. Um, oof, I'm going to say I'm curious about Under the Rainbow. That is definitely a what's in the box movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to watch Fletch. I'm not going to lie just because Chevy Chase is an asshole. But I mean, come on. I've seen films with worse people in them that I've liked, so I could give it a chance. Ooh, if we went with your third list, I think I'd be okay with it. But I honestly I want to know what's in the box in your second list, so I'm going to say I'm voting for list two on your side. Okay. That's the one I'd like. Josh of your lists. Yeah, your third list just stands out right there. Uh, Never seen La La Land. I love Blade Runner 2049. Not looking forward to Justice League, but sometimes you gotta. You gotta gotta eat that broccoli. Stardust. Also, um, De Niro camping it up and you guys have talked so much about 21 bridges now i'm curious i've not seen it i just really want to see it oh it's such a good movie i really enjoyed that movie i was one of those movies where i'm just like i had i had had it i had no nothing to watch on a friday or saturday night i plugged it in i'm just like whatever you know i'm just gonna give it a shot Mm -hmm. because i know i saw the uh trailer for it Mm -hmm. like at the theater and i was just not impressed but it was done by the russo brothers if i recall correctly and I watched it, I'm like, holy shit, that was an amazing movie. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think Blade Runner 2049 deserves to be its own destination, maybe even Justice League. If we did, if, although if we did Justice League, we no, have to be. No, you know, no, no, I was going to no. say the, Sny- the Snyder Cut, if we were going to make that any kind of destination. I almost went with Sports and Aliens because of the theme, but Major League deserves to be a destination. So, but again, I solid. Will- I will say this about my second list. It is topical. It contains a Captain America film. And right now, Falcon and Winter Soldier is trending on uh, Disney Plus. So a a solid selling point on that one, too, Nigel. And of my lists, and I know you guys like the first one with uh, the greatest. And if we went with that one, play the game, too, as I've called it. But I got to go the long shot. Number three is the one I'm championing hard because, as I said, a lot of these movies we're never going to get to, at least not anytime soon. Grease Lightning, Bingo Long, The Hitter. Three the Hard Way just is a fun looking movie. And I'll go into the descriptions in a bit. And of all of them, I've only seen Any Given Sunday. So as much as I would love to champion my parents list, which has Brian's song, which is based on a true story of Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers. Uh, when Piccolo discovers Sayers. he's dying. Sayers, Sayers, thank you. Yeah, James Kahn plays Piccolo in that. And Billy D. Williams plays Gail Sayers. And it's got the Chicago Bears, Dick Buck Kiss, Jack Ward and his coach Hollis. And I really want to champion that because also the champ stars uh, John Voight as Billy Flynn, who is an alcoholic who gets back into boxing to save, you know, basically take care of his kid. And also The Hustler, which Paul Newman and Jackie Gleason playing hooker, uh, hookers, Jesus God, hustlers, <laughs> um, pool hustlers, and George C. Scott in one of his most ruthless roles. I got to say, but this one I got to go with. Yeah, that my third list. These films 
I don't think we're ever going to get to otherwise. Not in a long time. Well, Brian's song is an hour and 13 minutes, and I've got a UTA next weekend, so I am almost sold on that one. <laughs> wow. wow. And also, also the reason I'm not really championing that, that they're all depressing films. With the exception of Maverick and maybe Nell, they all are kind of like they they have endings but i wouldn't call them happy endings at all i mean the first film was about a dude dying of cancer and it just goes from there and i just remember um our, our whistle stop campaign trail to washington and how yeah, came that out was of that just one. depressing <laughs> yes so it was uh, like days of thunder was a breath of fresh air i which, never thought i would say that <laughs> which, which, which list are we talking about with all the heavy movies the second one um of the parents list of mine. Oh. So which one are you championing? You're championing championing the long shot? Yeah, the long shot. List number three. And Josh, what about you? Well, um, Nigel, I would have to say of yours, uh, it's a it's a toss up between list two and three. Under the rainbow definitely is a what's in the box situation. Um it would be fun, like Civil War would be a good first Marvel movie to watch with you guys. But damn, I really like 21 Bridges. <laughs> and it's, what, what's it going to be? The movie you know or the box? Well, I've never seen Working Girl. And after my episode of Bob's Burgers, I'm curious. <laughs> and what is Mulholland Falls about? It's a detective film noir kind of movie. Um, uh, hold on. I have the. I actually still have the IMDb page up. Mulholland Falls. There it is. Okay. It's... Um, uh, in the desert near Los Angeles, a beautiful woman named Allison Pond is found murdered. A special investigation unit led by hard edge maverick detective Max Hoover is brought in when it looks like the victim may have ties to a secret military program. I don't know. I think I, I think I'm going to go with list two. I think I would go with list two on that one for you. Oh, or list three. I don't know. Those two or three is a toss up for me. I'm going to say yes to which one of the two I'm going to pick. Tom, for yours... Um, Shit, I don't know, man. Definitely one or three. Well, if I can sell you with some of the descriptions and maybe some of the IMDb scores here. Mm. So, of course, um, the long shot. Um, tired of being treated like a slave by the team motor. Uh, Bill Bingo Long steals a bunch of Negro League players away from their teams. They take to the road, barnstorming through small Midwestern towns playing local teams. Finally, Bingo's nemesis is in attendance of one of their established games, and they are forced into a winner-take-all game. If Bingo's team can beat the All-Stars, they can join the Negro League. But if they lose, they're out. And this one's got a 6.9 on IMDb with an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Grease Lightning, of course, I already said, tr based on a true story, it's got a 6.3 on IMDb and a 52% on Rotten Tomato. The Hitter! An ex-professional boxer tries to make a new start when teaming up with a fast-talking but aging hoodlum and an ex-call girl, but soon get more than they bargain for when crossing an adversary from their past. It's got a 5.5 IMDb and nothing on Rotten Tomatoes. And finally, three the hard way, uh, a 6.4 on AMDB and a 51% Rotten Tomatoes audience score. No, um, uh, no it's on YouTube. So there's that. Yes. But three the hard way. The story involves a white supremacist plot to taint the United States water supply with a toxin that is harmless to whites, but lethal to blacks. The only obstacles that stand in the way of this dastardly plan are Jim Brown, Fred Williamson, and Jim Kelly, who shoot, kick, and karate chop their way to final victory. Classic black exploitation action film, as only the 1970s can produce. Oh my god, it's got Shaft in it? Yes, Fred Williamson. Okay, I'm, I'm oddly intrigued. Hmm. See, Tom, I love, like, sometimes, like, you need a pepper in, like, gotcha movies like i'm gonna get you with this one you know mm -hmm. but it's like and that was good because we had movies in there we had never seen like swashbuckler right yes um and dead calm but uh like those are good episodes good fun movies to watch with you guys but it's like i see those movies i'm just being honest here is like i would love like any given sunday is the only movie i've seen on that list i don't mind watching movies i haven't seen mm -hmm. but it's like i've got to wait 
four weeks because I have nothing. I feel nothing for any of those movies coming up with this way. And you're trying to sell me on them. I'm just like, I want to go for it. But it's like, I want to also go for your first list because there's a couple of movies on there I recognize. I think you get a certain level of excitement over a movie you haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Like for me, and I'm probably going to say a majority of, uh, I'm not going to go with a majority, but I, I'm not going to speak for Dan either. But I know for me. It's like if I get a movie that I see and I know, I'm more inclined to go with that list. So that's why like uh, your Sink or Swim Summer Tour list was great because it's like, oh, I know Aquaman. That's a movie that I've seen. I like that movie. I'll be willing to watch that movie. So a movie that I know that I like. Mm -hmm. Because like, I'll be honest, like right now, Dan's got other lists. Like there's plenty of movies on there I haven't seen, but it's got more recognizable films. Sure. Like uh, I'm not trying to say this to be a dick or anything. I'm just trying to... Say, try to walk you through my what's going on in my brain right now. No, I get that. And I'm it's curiosity for me. You're comfortable with the familiar. I'm excited by the unknown. I want to take a chance. So once we get to it, I'm going to lobby taking the chance on the unknown. And I uh, totally get that. But it's like, especially when it comes to movies, mm-hmm. I like uh, I, I keep going back to like Sink or Swim Summer Tour. It's like it had a couple of recognizable films in there mm-hmm. that made me comfortable going with it. Like I want to go with the long shot because uh, but it's like it makes me uncomfortable because I haven't seen any of these movies. Mm-hmm. And the only movie I recognize is the penultimate movie on that list being Any Given Sunday. But it's like part of me wants to go with it because I haven't seen any of these movies. It could be interesting. The other part of me wants to go go against it because it's like i don't know any of these movies what like i need something to look forward to because i remember half the reason i went with uh your list on the flying high on the hero's journey Mm -hmm. was because it's like i recognized a couple of the movies in there Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't have an issue really with any of tom's lists i think what got me on the sink or swim summer tour was there's a couple of like josh called them gotcha movies Mm -hmm. that like you started off with like a movie I, I wasn't too keen on, but I ended up loving, which was um, yeah, uh, Aquatic Life. Aquatic Life, because I was like, oh, geez, fucking Wes Anderson. And then mm-hmm. I remember, th- I also remember thinking, typical Tom, he's going to pick a Wes Anderson film. <laughs> but yeah. I ended up liking that film. Okay, but mm-hmm. then you were like, from Wes Anderson, we go to Aquaman. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> it's like okay, yeah, it's like, okay. it's like okay, I could go past the first one to get to. It's like that's why his first list is. Uh, the one that I want, like, knee-jerk reaction, I would go with out of Tom's list. But at the same time, I'm trying to see this through Tom's eyes on list three. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the one he's the most excited about. Yes. So instead of me going Josh mode and being like, oh, well, I recognize Rudy and Knight's Tale. Those are good movies. Let's go with that list without even acknowledging the other movies. I'm trying to, like, mm-hmm. okay, well, I haven't seen these other two yeah. movies. My uh, The only one of Tom's list I'm not... 100 percent on board with and I, I would be like no is his second list because those are some heavy films and if i learned anything from the whistle stop campaign trail i can't do six weeks of heavy films no no <laughs> that, that's why i'm not going with that one as a champion uh, list much as i would love to because my parents got me the first two movies on the list but yeah every other film is just like, <laughs> like i want to quit yeah. Why? Um yeah, and I know Grease Lightning looks like it's a Richard Pryor comedy from the late 70s. Mm-hmm. I we know how you are about story. movie. We know how Josh is when it comes to movies made before 1977. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 1980s was the greatest decade. Let's just uh, stop there. Uh, the 70s has a lot of films that would like to have a word with you. But if, if anything, look at the actors in these films. I'm not just choosing Bob Barberson, and this is his first film. The Long Shot has Billy D. Williams. It has Richard Pryor. It has, um, oh God, I'm James Earl Jones. It's got... Uh, oh my god so many names in this film and black actors that you just you've seen them in so many things it's also got tony burton who you would recognize as rocky's corner man oh yeah okay yeah. i know what you're talking about yeah stan shaw mabel king uh, these are actors you've seen in so many other things and 
you don't see them all together in films like this. And same with uh, Grease Lightning with Richard Pryor. It's got Bo Bridges. It has Pam Greer. And I already said Cleavon Little, who was um, the sheriff in Blazing Saddles. And seeing him, I, I don't think he had too many other films outside of Blazing Saddles. I think he died not long after that. So the only one that's really out there for me is The, the Hitter. But that just looks like it could be cheesy and three the hard way the same with Jim Brown. And when you give Jim Brown just something to play with, he could have fun with it. It just looks so cheese ball. It could be terrible. It could be great. Uh, those the, 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 Which one was the uh, Paul Newman film? Uh, the Paul Newman film was The, the Hustler. And that's a 1950s film. Jackie Gleason plays Minnesota Fats. He plays Fast Eddie. Um, Piper Laurie plays the whore, uh, Sarah Packard, and George. Right, I thought that was I thought that was in your uh, third list. Nope, that's uh, list two, the parents' list. Mm-hmm. I, I think I will go. I, I will. Uh, I will pick the long shot for you there, Tom. Yes. And of my lists to champion, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I don't. I don't have a preference either way. So yes, just whatever one. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think of any of the lists that I had to go with, I would probably do uh, wish list MC wish MCU wish MCU. Yeah, I say wish MCU is a great one. All right, so now for our second round of cuts, do we want to take a short break and? Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to another selection section episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and sports scout, Tom. And I've been told to tell you that with talent like yours, kid, you're going to go right to the top, right to the top of the cut list. Stick to video games, kid. Trust me. But thank you for sticking with us here at The Fire Pit. We've just finished up our first journey to The Empire Strikes Back, the first journey of our second season, and are ready to slide into home with our latest destination, 42, which means we need to have our eighth selection section episode of the show to find out how we're going to do it. How will we get there? Who will we get there with? Stick around. And maybe you'll find out. But if you want people to find out about your products, or if you have a destination film that you want us to find our way to, or if you just want to find the words to tell us how you feel, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line as well as what you want to email. Whether you have an ad, you want to recommend some movies for us, if you have an opinion about the list we did or did not pick, or if you just want a shout out, let us know. If you do, I promise that we will read it, we will set it over the plate, we will see it knocked to the stands, over the fence, over the, it's going, it's going! and never respond. Not my fault that was our only ball. You should have brought more. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Okay, I have to get back to picking that list that you liked so much. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. All right, well, let's go ahead and start our third round. Like, go, let's go with our one list, our third round of cuts, or second round of cuts, I guess. Um, go with your one list that you would pick out of each one of ours, and then rank them. Rank them into the order you would like them. Uh, okay, well, I'll start with Tom. Uh, I will go, f- for my personal taste, list one as number one, list two three as number two and list two as number three. Like I like Tom's first list the best, his third list, the second best and his second list. I, I don't really, I'm not keen on it at all. 
honestly, the Hustler and Maverick <laughs> are the only two, and Forty Two at the end of it. The Hustler and Maverick are the only two films I even want to watch in that list. Uh, Brian's Song, I I'm going to sound like people who say they don't like The Godfather, but I really think that movie's overrated. Um, mm. Yeah, it insists mm. upon itself. No. So you're saying if you had to pick one list out of Tom's, it would be uh, his first list. I want to see The Greatest. It's a movie that's going to take me out of my comfort zone. So, And same with Wimbledon. Wimbledon's like a chick flick that's going to definitely take me out of my comfort zone. In fact, I remember that movie came out. I'm like, oh, God, thank God I'm not dating anybody at the time. I'm not going to get dragged to that. <laughs> but, you know, and, and it's probably been 20 years since I've seen Rudy. I think I was in high school the last time I watched that film. Okay. And I've actually not seen A Knight's Tale. And I... And I don't think I've seen the natural. In fact, I, yeah, I don't think I've seen it. So the natural is the one with the uh, where he makes the light the um, the lightsaber. The um, <laughs> well, that was the last one. After a, a lightning bolt strikes a tree and he makes a bat out of the tree. Yeah, it, it got parodied by the uh, the Simpsons with the softball episode. Right. Yeah. Still, I've not seen it. I've only seen parodies of it. Um, and I've not seen any of the movies in his third list either, with the exception of Any Given Sunday. I'm just more curious about the first list. Okay. That's uh, I'll, when I get to my picks, I'll ex- I'll continue off that thought. So I'm just going to put a pin in that thought right here so I can come back to it in a few minutes. And Josh's, <laughs> li- Josh's list. Um, I would like to thank Josh for participating. Um, <laughs> Uh, number three, La La Land automatically disqualifies it. You'd think it'd be Justice League, but it's not. Uh, no. Um, I like your first list a lot, Josh. Your first list seems really interesting with Soap Dish, movie I've not seen before. Raging Bull, never seen it. The Fighter, never seen it. Moneyball, seen it, loved it. Friday Night Lights, haven't seen it since it came out in theaters. Tony and I went to go see it together. And 42, I mean... And your second list would be fun to do. Those would be really fun episodes. But I, I've not seen Cowboys and Aliens, but I'm not really in a hurry to watch it. <laughs> I've seen it twice. Once when it came out and once uh, when I was going through movies to watch again. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that film. Like it was a year yeah. ago or two, yeah. year or two. And I'm just like, I remember that film. And then I watched it. I'm like, oh, that's why I haven't watched it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like I said, I've not seen it, but it doesn't mean I don't want to. Mm-hmm. And I'm not in a hurry to get to it. Uh, the Hurricane's a really good film. Um, I've not seen Love and Basketball. Major League is stupid. No, I'm just kidding. It's one of the best comedies ever. Uh, Mm -hmm. The Express, and never seen it. And three, we're just, no, we're not even going to talk about three. I don't even want to go over that one at all, because no. And of my own list, I will champion uh, number three personally, but I'm starting to see your guys' argument towards number two, that Under the Rainbow film it has me going, what's in the box? Like I saw that and I'm like, ooh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's me. What about you, Tom? Honestly, I think I'll start with you first because I'm of the same opinion. Of all your lists, list two is the one I kind of lean most towards just because of what's in the box. But list three is very close. It is actually, oof, all three of your lists are pretty solid too. Nighthawk seems very interesting. I really want to see that film, but it's got Sylvester Stallone in it, so we might get to it again someday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Expendables 2 is the one that I'm like, eh, about, but I've never seen it, so maybe it could be better or worse. Empire State and Fast and, Fast and Furious. I mean, come on. It's Fast and Furious. We know what we're getting into. It's going yeah. to be but it's just popcorn fun. That's why I'm having a hard time with your list. So all, each one kind of has its own quality to it. Oof. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I might be leaning more towards list one. Oh really? my God. I'm really? Just, I, I, I'm feeling a little more list one. It seems the more fun list of yours too. Another 48 hours. I've seen Roadhouse a dozen times. So that one is like, I know what. Okay. I will say this about Nighthawks. I have a friend at work that is a diehard Sylvester Stallone fan. Mm -hmm. He's like a mark for Sylvester Stallone. He's got uh, Rocky and Rambo shit all over his desk and all that. He told me that Nighthawks is not a Sylvester Stallone action film. It Mm -hmm. bears no resemblance to the shit he made post Rambo Mm 2. There's no resemblance at all. Sure, sure. And that's this is what's hard for me. That's I think honestly though, the more I think about it as much under the rainbows of what's in the box, we're not going to get to that film anytime soon if we get to it ever again. 
um, in the description alone. Nazis and midgets all go to see <laughs> the Wizard of Oz, and hilarity, hilarity ensues. So I'm going uh, just because of that film, I would go with that. Um, I'm weak on Civil War because it's Civil War. I love that film, but we've seen it a dozen and a half yeah. times. And and Josh of your lists, I disagree with Nigel. I kind of dig list three for me. That's the one I would uh, champion of yours. I've seen Blade Runner 2049, and that's it. Every other film is new to me. I know we'd start off solid. The rest, I'm not looking forward to Justice League. I know it's going to suck, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, the, uh, jo- the Justice League is not as good as the Snyder Cut. I will say that. Well, the Snyder Cut I hear isn't that good either. It's just, um, it's slightly better shit. It's more solid shit. The Justice League is wet shit. 21 Bridges, you both have been talking about. So now I'm curious about that. The only reason I love your first list, Josh, I'm going to have, and that's going to be second, but I've seen most of those movies on that list with the exception of uh, Moneyball. All solid movies, though. Don't get me wrong. And the third list, also solid. I've seen a good chunk of those. Cowboys and Aliens, not a good starter. And. Of my list, I've made it pretty obvious. If you guys went with my first list with the greatest, uh, play the game too is what I called it. I will not cry, I promise. But I'm going to champion the long shot just because when I present lists and movies, I don't expect them to be us to like them or dislike them. I present them because I want us to give them a chance. Right. And that's why I champion this most of all, because with the exception of any given Sunday, I doubt we'll get to any of them ever. And I'd like us to give them a chance. Josh, what about you? Well, um, of Nigel's list, God, I'm still torn between list two and three, but I do see your argument for uh, his first list. Rocky four is a fun movie. Yes. Um, Expendables two is a fun movie. Never seen Empire State. Fast and the Furious is a movie. Is it a movie you'd like to see again? Though? Is that the one with the 400 mile long runway? No, that that's the that's like the sixth one. Yeah, I thought that was a, it was one of ones with the the rock in it. Yeah, this is I the think first the one. One it's, was the first one. This is the first one with the rock in it, and this was the first one where they made the fat that they finally connected the Fast and the Furious connected universe and they brought the characters from that were only in fast and the furious two. And then they brought the characters that were only in Tokyo drift to this movie. And then they culminated with them dragging a safe down a highway. Oh yeah. That was this one. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God, that was the one that was so paint by the numbers. I remember watching this with my brother and uh, I'm sitting here calling it like they switched the safe underneath the bridge. He's like, what have you seen this? And I'm like, no, it's obvious. (laughs) But I would say out of your list, Stan, um, yeah, I'm going to go with list two if I had to make the choice. Oh, God. But list three, as much as I don't want to see Working Girl, I want to see Working Girl. Just because of Bob's Burgers. Yeah, it's just because of Bob's Burgers. And um, like honestly, I, you guys have seen Roadhouse a dozen times. I only remember the scene where he rips the dude's throat out. I don't remember any other aspect of that movie, but I know I've seen it. It's a good scene. And what's sad is I don't know if I remember that scene from actually watching the movie or from Chris Pratt reenacting it in uh, Parks and Rec. I will say that Roadhouse contains Bill Murray's favorite sex scene of all time. And every time he sees it on TV, he calls Kelly Lynch's husband and tells him that it's on TV. (laughs) Because Kelly Lynch's husband was the writer of Scrooged and he was in Scrooged. So (laughs) I wish Bill Murray would randomly call me. And tell me my wife's getting naked with Patrick Swayze. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But he's been dead for a decade. So? But then uh, I want to take that pin then that I, I uh, put in earlier. I'm going to take it out. And I want to talk about Tom's lists here. Like, as much as I want to uh, go with your third list, Tom, mm-hmm. I think it's got a lot of interesting movies, and I know you've been championing the shit out of it. It's like, I want to go back to like that, those gotcha films that, uh, not like gotcha as in gotcha, but uh, as in like, oh, those are grabbing me into pull me towards your list Mm -hmm. like your first list it's like i see knight's tale i see rudy i know that i get those two films so at least 
you know, 40% of that entire journey, I know I would enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then if you factor in 42 in the natural, two movies that I am fairly sure I will enjoy, I'm talking 80% of that entire list is something that I think that I would at least enjoy. The Greatest in Wimbledon? I have no thoughts about The Greatest in Wimbledon. I'm probably not going to enjoy. Sure. But, um... It's like I see those movies and they kind of the the ones that I recognize and I immediately have that level of familiarity with them. Mm -hmm. It's like you're walking into a crowd. You see the one person, you know, and you're like, hey, I know you. And you walk over to them and you immediately like, OK, now I'm at least comfortable. I have somebody I know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. next to me, you know, so you're not just like wandering aimlessly by yourself. And I know you get off on going to a places where, you know, nobody. Mm -hmm. Me, I have agoraphobia and I can't stand large crowds. <laughs> Like when we went to Dark Lord Day, Tom, you would be fine going out on your own and meeting new people. For me, I'm like, Tom, stay close. Don't go too far. And then you're like, Josh, stop touching me. I'm uncomfortable. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> but when you do send me off by myself, I come back with an armful of beers and a pack of cigarettes. Typically, yes. Typically, yes. And I know I've gone out with you plenty of times bar hopping. And you're just like, you You could literally watch you getting off just talking to random people. So it's like, that's why I kind of want to go with your third list. But if you go with the gotchas on that one, mm -hmm. it's only any given Sunday. That's the only movie on that list I know. And I agree with you that we're not going to touch any of those other films mm -hmm. ever. I wouldn't say never. Two of them have uh, Billy D. Williams and Richard Pryor. And I, I can't say we won't ever not get to them ever again. Well, let's look at it this way. We've been going watching movies for over a year now, and we've only watched one movie with Billy D. Williams. There's a lot of movies out there. I know. You make fair point. But it's it, it, the other point is, this isn't our last Star Wars film. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically, we've got two other Star Wars films that have Billy D. Williams in them. But then that means we have to either A, watch Rise of Skywalker, but the other option is we do get uh, Return of the Jedi. I would vote for Return of the Jedi, personally. Yes. But you make a fair argument. But, um, also, Billy D. Williams yeah. is in Batman. He is. He is in he is. Batman. Thank you for reminding me. But for Tom, um, I, I want to go with your first list, but at the same time, I want to go with your third list. But I want to go with them for different reasons. So you won't hurt my feelings if you go with the first list. The first list is solid too. I don't. You make. Mm -hmm. I mean, your arguments are compelling enough. I mean, damn it, anxiety brain is doing it again. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> No, honestly, because I'm not going to like uh, and I'm willing to have this live on the podcast. But, Tom, I'm giving you like the uh, what did I say earlier? The um, benefit vote, whatever. Fuck, I had a phrase for it. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to go with your first list now that I've talked for an hour. <laughs> OK. And of my lists, I advocate. Yes. I honestly have no strong feelings either way on any one of my lists. I have no strong feelings about this one way or the other. Thank you, Futurama, for the win. Uh, what's the one you hate the least, though? Like, all honesty, I don't know why Dan just gets such a flaccid dick for La La Land. I would be willing to watch that one. Because it's stupid. Have you seen it? Most of it. Enough to know I don't like it. The preview. Well, it's a musical. That's the only thing I know of it. And I've watched a bit of it where they were dancing on the cars at the beginning. It doesn't seem like my cup of tea, but I would be willing to watch it for the podcast. Justice League is fun, but it's definitely not the best movie I've seen. I love Stardust and I love 21 Bridges. Never seen Bl Blade Runner. Hmm. I would have to say probably my list three, too. If I was to advocate one list, it would be list three. That's a solid list, in my opinion. I mean, I voted for it of your lists. Yeah. Yep. That and just because Dan hates it so much, it's like, I want to watch La La Land just in spite of him. <laughs> I'm not joking. You do that shit and the next list is all Westerns. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> all John Wayne Westerns, too. Yeah, we all John. Well, Dan, guaranteed not getting a vote from me. It doesn't matter. Tom has to vote. <laughs> obscure black and white westerns shit i'm fucked no, i wouldn't be that cruel because i don't want to watch that shit either <laughs> so yeah so we are down to basically dan's was a second list yep tom's first list and my third list yep that is a fun uh spread there that's what she said hey oh 
All right, so voting time, fellas. Voting time. Final round of cuts. So we've got Dan's list two, America, a tour. Tom, play the game, two star. Yes. And Josh, Josh list three. Josh list three. (laughs) So Nigel, of those three, which is your vote? Not your La La Land list. So La La Land list is Dan's vote. Tom, what's yours? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, if I had to vote for my list, I'd, I'd put my third star into the play the game to my first list. Um, if I had, but since I cannot vote for my own list, um, yeah, I got to go. There's really no rule that says you can't vote for your own list, right? No, we, we can only do that when we get down to two and the other, okay. and the other person's list is there. Yeah. So that's, I mean, uh, da, 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 I got to go with... Um, this is hard for me. This is hard for me. This is really hard because. Said... <laughs> well, Jan, yeah, hey, Dan, Dan's list two wins of of the two of you. Um, yeah, because he giggied me into it. <laughs> you can't beat the that's, giggity. That's... Um, okay. <laughs> Wasn't even know I touched you that way. So Dan voted for the La La Land list. Uh huh. No. <laughs> Since Tom did kind of cut you off and didn't let you finish, which one I'm did sorry, you vote I'm sorry, for? I'm sorry, Nigel. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was, that was a joke moving on to you, and then you just took it and ran with it. You, to uh, topical humor, you took the ball and ran with it. <laughs> See what I did there? Josh made a sports pun. A correct one, too. I know. But broken clocks and all that. Yep, yep. But Nigel, what's your list there? What's your vote? Well, uh, like I said, I'm not keen on that third list from Josh. Uh, just not doing La La Land. Um, uh, so I would say your first list and my second list is what it's coming down to. Mm-hmm. Since we have three votes for my third list. Kidding. Now, I would have to say Tom's list and Dan's second list. Dom's first and Dan's second. So I think we're down to those two right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Two so men. America, a tour. <laughs> now we're going to Thunderdome this bitch. In politics, this is known as the bribery section. Yeah. What you going to give me? Respect. All, All right, right. We're going so... with Dan's list. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I win again. Sweet. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, Josh, since we're not going with one of your lists this time, you go first. Between my second list and Tom's first list. I know. Anxiety brain. I yeah. fucking hate it. We really need to do a one where the audience picks ours so we don't have to deal with this shit anymore. <laughs> yes. Let our audience piss us off. Not ourselves. Swashbuckler. Six times. Fuck. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go with Tom's list. Play the game too. Stars. I do like that first list. It kind of fits the theme since we're heading towards a sports film and all of these movies are sports movies. Mm-hmm. Whereas my second list only has two sports films, a league, mm. a league of their own. And we are Marshall, unless you count captain America shield throwing as part of the discus competition in, in the Olympics. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like Tom's first list. My, my second list is good and I'd love to do some of the movies on it, but they do all have big actors, Chevy chase. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom Hanks, Matthew McConaughey, you know, Captain America Civil Wars in the MCU. And I do have a feeling we're it, we're going to eventually get to an MCU film. Yeah, I, I, I do like Tom's first list. It kind of fits the theme of what we're going for. Like, it was just like the Sink or Swim Summer Tour, where all the movies had something to do with the water. You know, like this movie's mm-hmm. all, this one's all sports movies. Night's Tale's kind of stretching the definition of a sports film. <laughs> well, think about it. It's about jousting. I said jousting was the sport of the whatever I, it, time frame that is. It, it, it honors the spirit, not exactly the rule. So. And it does have We Will Rock You by Queen, which oh my makes God, it an the official one... sports film. What's funny about that is that, uh, Oh, what was it? No, no, no. It was, um, oh, I'm thinking two different movies. But yeah, yeah, I remember A Knight's Tale had a way wrong soundtrack for the movie that it was. Oh, the whole film was just anachronistic. I hated it the first time I saw it, but it's just charming as hell. Yes, yes. Heath Ledger does that to you. It's a smile. All right. Yes. I'm going to put in my vote Tom's first list. Tom, I know you you were big on that third list, and it seems interesting, but this sec first list, to me, 
just speaks to me in the way that I've not seen more than half the movies on this list. And in the way that Heath Sledger's smile makes you question your sexuality. Yes. Oh, no and, question about it. You know, mm. and Wimbledon's probably going to make me wonder why I'm doing this podcast, but <laughs> Danielle will be happy. Wasn't she asking about when we're doing a romantic comedy? I uh, know she was asking about when we were going to do a good film. Never, Danielle. Ne- never. <laughs> well, we did do Empire. We did do Empire. We did do Empire. Yes. So, Nigel, you vote for Play the Game 2. Yeah, I do. I, I vote for Play the Game 2. I like my second list, and I really want to see some of those movies on it, but I think we'll get to some of them in other ways. I hope we get to Under the Rainbow at some point, Nigel. That is just I know. So it's definitely wonderful. a what's-in-the-box kind of film. Like, Yes. I think Carrie Fisher says it's the worst film she's ever done, and she was in Drop Dead Fred. So... <laughs> That's right, she was. Oh my God, that was yeah. a terrible film. Yeah, yeah, but she says that this is the worst film she's ever done. Wait, no, I'm pretty sure Drop Dead Fred and Under the Rainbow both fall into that time where she was coked out of her mind most of the time. Like, so coked out that John Belushi took her to the side and said, you have a problem. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I vote I vote for your list, Nigel, for you know, your second list because I cannot vote for my list. Be, and also, I really am curious about Under the Rainbow, but I I also vote for my list if I can do that. So You can in this one, apparently. You can. I, one, if, if it's down to the final two and you're not in it, then yeah, you can vote for your own. All right. Well, I vote for my list as well. Honestly, guys, put your anxieties aside. I kind of figured my the list I was championing was going to be a long shot. Just because it's so, what are these films? And I get it. One day I will sell you on a list of unknowns. And we will take a chance. And that will be the last time we do that. Because it will all be terrible. <laughs> you go. All right. Well, Tom, I think that is officially the rule of two for you. Yeah. And the drought is over. Tom gets a list chosen. So we will be taking... Uh, Tom. You guys missed another Sith reference, didn't you? Stop. No, God damn it. Stop. So if you do not mind. So, um, but yeah, so Tom, this is all you, bro. All right. Well, we are taking James Earl Jones. Hey, Tom, Tom, don't, don't screw it up. <laughs> we are taking James Earl. <laughs> damn it. Now I'm in my own head. <laughs> anyway. We are taking James Earl Jones to the greatest. Robert Duvall mm-mm, mm-mm. to no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Mm-hmm. We're go- we're going to a baseball movie. Yeah, we, we need we to do need some to, kind no, of baseball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should do it like a baseball lineup, like to say and playing wearing sixty one, playing center field, and then they'll name the player. So you should you should do it kind of like that. Like oh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, that's, right, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, let me hang on real quick. I'm looking up the years that these movies uh, premiered. So I could use them as their like, no, baseball should. numbers. I would do it. So go ahead, Nigel. I was saying I would do it like this. Starring in the greatest, James Earl Jones. Okay. No, I like that, Nigel. It's much better than what I was going to do. And now your lineup. There you go. Starting James Earl Jones and the greatest, Robert Duvall in The Natural. Bring him up. Robert Prosky. Rudy! Now we have John Favreau in Wimbledon! Now Paul Bettany in A Knight's Tale! And finally, Alan Tudyk in 42! All right, Dan, I got a, I got an idea. Um, that was good, but maybe do like, a, and on first base, you know, James Earl Jones in the greatest, second base. And then I don't know what you do with four, five, and six, though. Uh, yeah, work some um, positions in baseball, Nigel. You got shortstop, first, pitcher, yeah, first base, second base, third base, whole, uh, catcher, pitcher, center field, right field, left field, shortstop, and that's it. So first base, second base, third base, shortstop, catcher, and pitcher. I mean, if that's a bad idea, just you can tell me; it won't hurt my feelings. It's a bad idea. I liked Tom. I liked the way Tom did it. I really did. He did it. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying like we could mix it up a little bit. 
too. I mean, I could, I'm just throwing out ideas. I could try it out this way too. There's no wrong answer. Just so let me see here. I'm not saying it was a terrible idea. Throw it out. I'm saying, hey, let's try it a different way too. Exactly what he's saying. <laughs> I'll try it no. anyways because it's not a bad idea. So okay, and now your lineup. First base, we have James Earl Jones in the greatest. Second base, we have Robert Duvall in the natural. Third base, we have Robert Prosky in Rudy. Your shortstop, John Favreau in Wimbledon. As your catcher, we have Paul Bettany in a knight's tale. Wait, I fucked that up. As, as your shortstop. No, I had it right the fourth time. God damn it, I'm screwing myself up. We have <laughs> your catcher, Paul Bettany, in a knight's tale. And finally, the pitcher, Alan Tujic, in 42. I lost track. <laughs> How's that? That works. Good. Yeah, that works. That's good. Now I'm suddenly wishing we would have factored in Rookie of the Year somewhere in here. Ooh, ooh! I wish I could have grabbed one like that, dude. I had one that was a it had almost every American sport, but I couldn't find a link between the last film and uh, uh, Forty Two. I had one that had boxing, racing, baseball, football, and yeah. Oh, and golf. Ooh, I had I, I had oh, and soccer. I had Caddyshack, Ladybugs, Ford versus Ferrari. And, oh, I had one. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I but I couldn't find a link between like the last couple films. That's a heartbreaker, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So that's tonight's show. Uh, fantastic. Uh, congratulations to Tom. We'll be using his list to go to our next film, Forty Two. Yay! Uh, yeah, Woo! Let's... Do you believe in miracles? Yay! So, uh, as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, wherever podcasts are sold and downloaded, whatever you do with them. Uh, regular episodes, Tuesdays at 6 p.m., unless our uh, editor decides to release it early at midnight. It happens. Or whenever the fuck he feels or like. Or whenever the hell he feels like. It doesn't matter. We're not structured here. Uh, <laughs> please like and subscribe at whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. And leave a review. Leave a review on our podcast when you listen to it whatever medium you listen to it on, it helps us grow. It helps people when they search the fire pit podcast or when they're uh, searching movies, podcasts or whatever, it helps us show up on lists. If you leave a review. So please leave a review uh, after you've downloaded and listened to our episode and be sure to join our discord server as well. So you can chat with us and uh, other fans of the show. You can get an invite to our discord server at our website at firepit.podbean.com. There you'll get new notifications uh, and even better. It's a fun time. Yes, it is. And for more fun, you can email us directly at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. A little more about how to do that in the interspersal. If you want to send us a long message, a short message, a happy message, or a sad message, it's up to you. Also, like our page on Facebook and follow us at Twitter at FirePitCCE. Both are linked in this episode's description as well. And to repeat what Nigel said, be sure to review our podcast so you can, you know, let everyone know how amazing we are. Much like these amazing people who follow us on Facebook, I would like to shout out Mamon, Wabashadi, and Kaluchi. Thank you for following us on Facebook, for spreading the word about us, and helping to keep those fire pits burning. Even if you don't listen to all their episodes, every little bit helps. We are glad to have you here. And, uh, you know, guys, we actually got a uh, review on Apple Podcasts here. Oh, do we? Ooh. Yeah, a new review posted on Monday by a uh, DM Winkler 11. That name, so, that's a great name right there. I wonder who that could be. But he said, uh, very funny with great production. These guys do an excellent job at entertaining, making you laugh, and most importantly, reviewing the movie. Highly recommend you give it a listen. Well, thank you. We really appreciate the review. And if you review our podcast, we'll read your review on the uh, next week's episode. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a bad review, in which case... We'll still read it. We're not picky. I was going to say special shout out to my wife for, you know, putting up with me and dealing with me. And another shout out to... Uh, Wink and GMP from the Shattered Order podcast for coming on last week's episode. We definitely appreciate it and had a fun time with you guys. 
Yeah, I really appreciate having them on last week. That was a lot of fun, and uh, they did say that they'd be willing to come on if we ever do another Star Wars or MCU movie or something, so that would be fun. And I would like to give... Yeah, we definitely will have them back. Oh, yeah, and <laughs> I'd like to give a shout-out to uh, Peggy, old-school friend of the channel. Thanks very much for listening and your continued support. It's uh, always appreciated. Another special shout-out to Rob of Rob's Custom PCs coming on last week, doing the trivia, shutting me out, although he didn't shut me out. I just, I'm bad at this now. You know, but it was still, it was fun. I had a ton of laughs. It was a great episode to record last week. And uh, a shout out to Danielle and Tarek Thorne and Nick and Tucker and everyone else that's on Discord joining us and joining the discussions right now. Thanks. And this has been an excellent time, guys. I'm looking forward to going on this journey, sliding into 42. Actually, no, what did we say we were going to call this journey again? The fire pit. Stri- fire pit strikes out. The f- I was going to do it with you. You didn't have to stop. Oh. God. Well, let's. Let's count it down, guys. One, two, three. Fire penis. I hate Damn him. it. I hate him so much. <laughs> we haven't even started the journey. We're striking out. The fire pit strikes out. <laughs> Will this journey be our last? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the fire pit strikes out. <laughs> the fire pit strikes out. Good times. Yes. Yes. Very good. But uh, can we start calling Tom to Tom or two, two second Tom? Tommy two tone. Tom. Yes. No. Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? You know what? You're out of there. But until. Stop. Stop. Because no, no, no. This is, seriously, it is, it is your second time. Second list getting picked is the second movie of in our second season. I just, so. now, I just now put that together. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Is it only the second list I've won? Oh my god! Yes. I am bad at this podcast. And I was a no, film no, no, major. No. You are great at the podcast. Yeah, yeah. You just say you pick uh, hipster f- lists, and me and Dan are very much not hipsters. No, no, it's it's understandable. I, when you're as cool as me, everyone else is just based. I didn't say that. It was implied. But until no, next time, not. so Josh doesn't get the last word. I've been Tom. I've been Dan. And I've been Josh. Oh, you got the last word. Damn it. In your face, bitch. <laughs> that wasn't even the order. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. <laughs> Fuck you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. <laughs>